Hello and welcome. I'm NBG, and this is a bit of a wrap-up video, both for my main server, as well as a discussion about the things I'm working on prior to Dragonflight, the things that I may, might make content on, the things I'm watching out for, stuff about me personally going on. Uh, a lot of things to get through. We are going to start today with what's probably most important to anybody randomly clicking on the video, uh, which would be things that I'm working on currently to rather, whether it's getting ready for Dragonflight, things I want to get done before Dragonflight, how I want to set myself up for making gold in the future. I have a decent list here of all the things I'm working on. As I stated in yesterday's video and probably numerous times, um, gold making's not great right now unless you have a foothold within um, within that, meaning unless you're able to craft mounts or have crafted transmog or have other things like that. Hey, dude, get out of my shot. Um, whether or not you have stuff like that really determines how well gold making is right now. Nobody's going out there and just farming 40k an hour, you know, by doing primals or something. It's just not, it's not a thing right now. Um, most things are between like 7 and 12k, which makes it kind of suck a little bit for lack of a better term you know i've talked about it in my recent videos that a lot of times i'd rather sit around and vendor flip because it's like if i can make 7k an hour vendor flipping why would i want to go make 10k an hour actually trying to farm um yeah that's just that's just how i am because i'm lazy and you know <laughs> it is what it is right um however i am still more than willing to to hear people's tales of of good farms and other things like that to try. Um, a couple people have spoken up that they really do want me to go do some farms to at least try some and show. And I actually have a couple that are really out of the ordinary um, that are probably awful, to be honest. But I figure, why not? Why, why not go out and give those a shot? So I have some ideas for stuff like that, and I will do that over the coming weeks. But let's get right into it now things I am working on so I have this mindset right now that most things are not worth my time or at least not worth as much as they were to my time specifically for gold making I prefer at the moment I'm trying I'm changing my I'm transitioning the, my thought process to how can, instead of like how can I make the most money most gold right now of how can I set myself up to make the most gold in the future. I don't want what is happening right now to happen again to me. Meaning the markets that I was using prior to two, you know, 9.2.7 are completely dead. Um, and all the, the ways I have of making gold are pretty dead in comparison, right? I don't want that to happen again. Uh, my, my gold per day was about 120 to 200K a day in profit and it is not anywhere near that ballpark now and i need to rectify that so there's things i need to do so in order to do that i think i need to get into those markets that i've said i didn't want to before because those markets don't seem to crash right um and what i'm talking about is crafted transmog and mounts and other things of that nature so things i'm working on one of which and i'll just use the auction house because it's better than just standing here right uh, one of which is strange goop right right now on my server the price is up it's actually usually a little bit less than that strange goop you get this from fishing in zareth mortis it is 100k on my server um so let me let me talk about this one just a little bit so when i had heard about strange goop I was like, wow, that's awesome. That's, a, that's such a high amount. And honestly, I heard about this way late because I didn't even come back um, to WoW. I don't know. It was maybe two months ago at most. I don't even think it's been two months since I've been back. And it was like way after this stuff had come out for like uh, Zareth Mortis. And I was like, wow, I can just fish and get strange goop. And reading on WoWhead comments about some dude who pulled up like 44 of them in a weekend like that like <laughs> you know just insane stuff and i'm like wow even if they're selling at 100k my mind immediately thinks of gold making so i immediately think of like man if this sells it like let's say it sells at 100k 100k that means if i got one within 10 hours that's 10k an hour that's not bad obviously the fat you know more luck if you get it sooner 
the better it is per hour. And that's usually how I measure things, you know, is how much gold per hour can I get it? Like if it's going to take me 20 hours, then why the hell would I do this? I can go farm something else, get more money that way, and then buy one if I wanted, right? It was never about getting this to use it. It was about getting this to sell it because I like gold. So I've done this and I've done this a lot. And I have seven to eight hours of farming in, and I have not gotten one yet. Um, well over, let's see, I started using like the rarity, uh, rarity add-on to like track. And the rarity add-on doesn't have a lot on it because I did it for like six to seven hours before I even put on the add-on. But I have at least 2,500 plus casts um, without getting one, and it's a bit frustrating. But I also have a very good track record of having probably the worst luck in World of Warcraft history. I have, what, 320 or so kill attempts to get, like, Ashes of Alar, which we'll talk about later. Like, I've been trying for that crap for 15 years now, and everybody and their mother has it. Everybody can just go out and get it in the first five kills. And I've been killing it, you know, off and on, granted, because it gets very depressing to just do it on every character I have and not get it week after week after week. Um, like, I have no rare mounts or anything good like that, because that stuff does not drop for me. I don't care who you are. It does not drop for me. Everybody else is cheating. <laughs> like, I, I don't know what to say. Uh, no, obviously not. But, like, I'm telling you... If there's any person in this game that has bad luck, it's me. And that's also what's been changing my mindset of even stuff like Strange Goop, of everybody else being able to get it much faster than me. On average, I also feel that my luck is so bad that things have to change soon, and I'm going to have to start getting things like this to drop. I'm going to have to get that damn mount to drop. Things of that nature just have to change, because my luck is so bad it's getting impossible for it to be this bad this long. So anyway, I'm getting off topic. Strange Goop, one of those things, and it's mostly just because I'm stubborn and I don't care, I'm going to get one. I'm gonna probably just throw it right back up on the auction house, but if it's selling for at least 100K, I will. If not, I'll probably hold on to it, but I'm going to sell one, damn it. <laughs> like, that's on my list of things to do. Um, while we're talking about Strange Goop, um, I also think Strange Goop is potentially a really good investment opportunity. You know, if they're like 60k, or heck, honestly, even if they're at 100k, if they're getting lower for you, I would highly suggest maybe buying 500,000 worth and holding on to it for six months. No one's going to want to go back and farm this later. But that mount's pretty cool. People are going to want that mount. I think Strange Goop price, you know, six months to a year from now could be fairly darn expensive um at least in comparison to where it is right this moment i do think it's an investment opportunity just so you guys know uh, one of the other things i've done and this is one that i have actually finished my wife and i and went out and farmed reigns the thundering cloud serpent which is really dropped in price on my server kind of want to just buy those two and put it up higher but i don't know i probably should to be honest i so scared of spending money sometimes anyway um this comes from what is that uh it's in pandaria it's in that middle zone bell of eternal whatever anyway there's a farm on it and me and my wife did this together she took a spot i took a spot we would just basically spam moonfire for three minutes and then like loot and rotate you know ch you know switch spots um if you go there with nobody else there, at least with the two of us, it took about five minutes of running around just mad killing until we started forcing hyper spawns. Once we forced hyper spawns, it wasn't too bad. This farm really wasn't that bad. At 30k, which is kind of what it was when I ended up selling it, I should have probably held on to it. It took me two hours and 55 minutes between the two of us. And like I could see five-man group being good, but it's like you're also not going to be within range to get all the loot anyway. So this two spots that her and I had, like... Like, I couldn't have gotten that much more per hour. Maybe I could have eked out more in, like, a five-man group. I, I think two people, two to three people is probably perfect, to be honest. Um, anyway, it took me two hours and 55 minutes. I gained this for about 30k. I gained, what, about 8k worth of harmonies and then some other random stuff to the vendor. Um, long story short, it ended up being just about 12k an hour um, at the end of everything. 
And yeah, like it wasn't bad, but it wasn't exactly anything to write home about. It really depends on how much this is selling on your server. If it's at 35 plus K, you might want to. It took my my wife three hours and 20 minutes to get. It took me two, two hours and 55 minutes to get. Um, but that was something I set out like, hey, I've never farmed one actually. I'm, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna farm one and I'm gonna get it. So I did that. So that's something else you could potentially farm or just get one to get one just to say that you have. Um, but I've done that now. Uh, next on my list is uh, Warbear. Warbear Woolies Warbear Harness. This is actually my... Oh, you're not going to be able to see it because of what I'm wearing. Here, let's fix it. Anyway, it's a lot easier to get this than... Wow, if I can hit buttons correctly, that'd be sweet. Alright, boom boom. Right, so you have your warbear woolies and the warbear harness used for transmog. Obviously, pretty decent leather set. It's actually really easy to get. You only need to be friendly with the timber maw to be able to buy. I think both of these from the vendor, um, and then you have to have like 275 in like classic leather working. It's that took me by the way because I, I did this all yesterday. That took me like 18,000 gold to just to get my... And I had some mats too. And it, and it took a lot of gold to get my leatherworking leveled. But I did it just to get it to the point to where I can at least be making these and have a side income. And I also did it because I saw that the price was still pretty decent on this server. On my main server, surprisingly. While on the server where we're doing the uh, Fresh 60 Fresh server... Um, that's different it's like 3k there so anyway because i thought about it doing it for that server but obviously it's selling much better here and actually that's sneaky that's a good idea this guy bought this you only need to be honored over there to buy it but he bought the pattern and then you can actually place the pattern on here hmm that's an interesting idea why not go buy the two patterns and just always have the two patterns up here smart guy that's a good idea warbear leather by the way um remarkably cheap if you remember when i farmed it i'm pretty sure they were at like 90 per they were at 90 per and i eked out what like i think i eked out like 9 or 10k an hour it wasn't even insane and now they're like half that price so um, but on the flip side other things like these middle tier leathers like thick leather and stuff are really rising in price um even like medium leather Actually, that's really small. I was buying them at like five yesterday um, when I when I was leveling. Um, or rugged, right? Those are actually fallen too. I was buying them at like six, as you can see. I purchased a whole bunch at like almost seven gold per. So like, rip. Maybe I did that when uh, at a bad time. Regardless, some of these leathers are actually getting pretty decent in price for whatever reason. All right, so next on my list. Uh, we briefly talked about it, but Ashes of Alar. Um, again, I have 320 something attempts, and I've never gotten the damn thing. Um, yeah, that has to drop for me at some point. So, if I have time, I need to get out there and all my characters and do it, and just get more attempts in, because I feel like it just has to freaking happen. It's the only mount I've ever really wanted, and I don't have it, and it's sad because I've been playing since Classic and like. Well, since vanilla, excuse me. How about say since vanilla? And yeah, I I don't have it because you know the game hates me. But we know that. So Ashes of Alar is uh, fourth on my list. Uh, next is Vial of the Sands. Oh, this wow, that's actually up in price. That's insane. That's a really good price. Um, well, maybe not really good, but it's pretty good, especially since you can get the other stuff for it cheaper now. These are making really good profit, but. They are an absolute b to get. Uh, you have to get archaeology. There's, there's some guides out there. Hopefully they're not old. But um, I'm following a guide where you got to get to like 525 um, archaeology. And then you start basically pumping everything into the Tolvir stuff. And then you got to get a certain urn. And then you got to open that certain urn and hope to God that you get the, uh, get the recipe. It's extremely RNG. You could get it on your first attempt once you got to that point, so it could take you to just, you know, five or six hours, or it could take you, you know, way too much. Like, I don't know how long it's going to take me, and my luck sucks, but 
um, that's something that I want to work on because if I have the ability to make it, it can make me money for the future, right? Same thing with Warbear Woolies and stuff like that. I need things that I can make that can make me money forever. And though that's basically the premise of my goals right now because there's nothing going on. I don't give a crap about doing anything in the game right now. I either want to make gold or make myself better for making gold, right? That's all I care about at the moment. So, Vial of the Sands, that's on my list. I've kind of picked it as the mount to go for. I'm going to get it. And that's that's a big that's a big goal for me. I gotta get this damn thing to drop so I can be one of the people who actually makes these. Um, one of the other things I'm working on is, um, let's see here, is battle pets. I don't, I don't need to look up anything, but battle pets in general. I want to start flipping battle pets between servers. TSM has a great functionality with that through their website where you can compare between and I can make a guide on that even but I've seen a couple good guides out there before so I don't know if it's really needed um, but basically you can look up kind of what's selling at your price right now on your server and compare it to another server you want to flip you know maybe you see you know XPET is 1k on your server but its average price is like 4k and a server you want to you know maybe send it to is at 6k you know you be like, cool, I can buy that 1K here and go bring it over to that other server. You can do things of that nature, and there's a lot of add-ons and a lot of things to help with that. That's something I want to get into, and I want to pick probably two servers. Um, problem is, I don't know a good server for pets. Pets seem to suck on my server, to be honest. And that's the other reason why I want to flip between servers. I haven't had a lot of luck with pets on my main server. Um, but it's something I want to get into, and I want to get into that because... I like pets more than standard transmog. I think crafted transmog is very good, um, but after crafted transmog, like I would, I'd rather do pets over like standard running Ultimate a thousand times or you know whatever dungeons you do, you know feel like doing to get transmog on the market to get thousands of it up here. Like I don't want to do that. I would rather craft very specific transmog uh, being craftable, or I'd rather do pets. So. That's something else I want to work on is start getting into a habit of doing those and trying to flip between a couple servers. Probably the server we're doing the, uh, at least for starters, that we're doing the Fresh 64 server on. Um, just to see if I can make some money that way. Because obviously if it's 1k here, but I can sell over 2k there and it sells, you know, make a k, you know, buy something over there for cheaper, sell it for higher over here. Yeah, anyway, that's a plan. Next, wow, I have a lot of these to go through, and we've already been talking for a long time. I need to hurry up. So, the other one is, and I actually have it. Um, one of my goals, which I did complete, just like the War Bear stuff, finally, because I wasn't lazy, is this right here. The This is the 10K Pet Charm Pet. Um, I realized that I could have spent those charms more wisely. But again, it was on my radar of, I don't care, I'm going to buy one, and I'm going to sell it. So, that's what I did. I bought one, it's up here, looks like apparently even maybe a little low, I don't know. Um, there's one other person selling it, so... But I bought the 10k pet charm pet, because it sells for, at least at the time when I decided I wanted to do it, it was at like 600k or something on my server. And I'm like, I have no idea if anybody's going to buy that, but... I like the idea of having something really expensive rather than a whole bunch of smaller pets. So I said, screw it, I'm gonna get it. And I did get it, I got it um, two days ago. So I now have this, that's the 10K pet charm, that's been complete. I want to get other crafted transmog. So for instance, I'll give you one off the top of my head. Oops, if I can spell. Here's like another one that I think is a good option. These styling hats. These are leatherworking things from Burning Crusade, I believe. Um, a couple of them are pretty easy to get. They're like uh, dungeon drops for like the pattern and stuff like that. But these are those uh, cool stylish hats, like that one or the purple one. Um, I think these are good transmog items, and they sell pretty well. And it's just a matter of getting the pattern. So this is another pattern that I want to go out and get a couple of these, so that I have a decent transmog item to sell for the future. Again, kind of like the War Bear Woolies. I want good crafted transmog that people actually want to wear and they actually want to use. 
and this is on my list of ones that I think are worth it. So I need to go out and get this. Um, another thing that I'm working on is the PvP pet vendor. I still, I know I made a video on it and I still haven't completed it. I did about 14 PvP pet battles and I never got the quest. Um, and I haven't gone back to try again, but I need to keep going at it so I can unlock that pet vendor in Boralus so that I have yet another place to spend charms at to buy pets that maybe not everybody has access to. Um, so that is also another thing on one of the things I'm working on. So as you can see, most things that I'm working on are all things, um, either personal goals like the Ashes of Alar because there's nothing else going on, um, or it's things that I can use to make gold going forward and not be screwed by a commodity market or, um, you know, not having, you know, or the closing of an expansion where things aren't selling the way they were before. So anyway, that's all the things that I am working on currently. There's probably going to be more. I can definitely think of a couple other transmog sets that I'd like to go for. Um, it's in terms of like being able to sell them, right? And I just don't know if I will have time. I don't think I mentioned I'm back up to a little over 3.3 million. Um, we had spent like 1.5 million on tokens. Um, and I've basically made almost all of that back already since I did that. Um, so we're not doing too bad. I don't exactly have a lot of gold, but it's not bad, right? Gold's just really slow right now. Um, but it's still going up more than enough every single day. Let's take a look at the tokens. Tokens, yeah, I know they rose in price back to 213. I knew when I had mentioned it in the video at around 200 that I needed to probably buy then. I'm still hoping that we see a lull within the next two to four weeks that this might drop closer to two. It was down to like 206 or something last night. I really wanted it too. I'm holding out hope, but as I kind of said about the things that are coming out over the next few months, I have a feeling things are just going to slowly go up rather than go down. I have a feeling that if we're going to be buying tokens, guys, it's sooner rather than later. Um, maybe if this drops under like 2.5 or something, I might just start buying um, and blow most of this gold just to get tokens in hand. Um, next on my list is things I am potentially wanting to make content on. One of the major ones is actually going on right now. The uh, Darkmoon Fair. Uh, there's ways to make gold for the future in Darkmoon Fair. Different things you can farm, different transmog, different items. Maybe you guys want to see stuff on that. But, you know, that only comes around like once a month. And I'm like, hey, it's going on right now. Maybe I should uh, go do some Dark Moon Fair stuff. Maybe make a video. Um, and just gather other things to make gold on it, right? So I was thinking about making some content on the Dark Moon Fair. And other than that, we have, what, Brewfest, right? Brewfest starts on the 20th, I believe. Um, you can't really make anything with the Harvest Festival, by the way. But in terms of money, gold. But you can definitely make some gold during Brewfest. Um, specifically getting the, the items so you can get the mounts off the vendor and stuff like that. Um, I was thinking about making content on Brewfest on ways to make gold. There's not a lot, but you can still make gold doing it, right? And I was also thinking about making content for basically other random bad farms. I have a couple in mind that I want to try that I'd love to see how they compete they are more than likely awful but they're the kind of things that nobody makes videos on you know what I mean like just being that guy to go out and try something random um, I'll, I'll even uh, give you a sneak peek of uh, one I am considering doing a farm on just to see if I can make it uh, make it work because I think it'll be awful oh damn it they dropped in price these were at like 300 or something like that. But I was thinking about literally farming spider silk and seeing if you can get spider silk quickly enough to make it worth while. Um, but now it's dropped in price from where it was. So I don't know if, it, if that would be. But it's random items like that, you know, as I'm going through different trade goods, you know, and I, and I look up leathers or I look up whatever. And I try to see, um, like, where's another one? Oh, it would be down here. Cobra scales. Also another one that's dropped in price, unfortunately. Like, there's things like that that are used for different items that I've really considered 
to go out and farm. Um, yeah. I was thinking about trying some off-the-wall old world stuff and just seeing what the uh, gold per hour looked like, right? So that's another thing I'm considering making content on. Now, as for things to watch out for, I'm watching out for price drops on items like Strange Goop. Um, if people just want to start to sell them early and the, and the price for some reason starts dropping, I think Strange Goop is probably a primary candidate to buy up and hold for three months to a year, just depending. Like, let us get deep into Dragonflight or something. Let them sit in your bank. Because I don't think anybody's going to want to go back and farm that crap. And that might turn into something even in Dragonflight. That also might be one of those things that if you see the price on it, you might be like, damn, I'm going to spend time. I have nothing else to do. I'm going to go out and farm one just because, you know, if it's at 300k on your auction house, it might be worth just having one up at all times in case it sells. You know what I mean? So that's one of those items that are on my watch list. I'm watching regional price drops. Uh, due to just the expansion ending of people dumping materials like if people are willing to go to the auction house and they're willing to just like I don't know as we get closer and they just want to dump desolate leather like this damn it um, <laughs> like if people are doing that kind of crap and they just decide that they want to dump desolate leather and, and other things like that that I know you can do a vendor flip on or whatever the case may be Man, I'm not going to be afraid to buy all of it. Like, just all of it. Like, look look how many millions are here, man. Like, look how much look how much is here. You think people are going to let this stuff sit here? What if somebody has 500,000 himself? They're going to say, screw it. I just want to get out of the market. I just want to sell it all and move on. Be that guy. Be that guy. And when people start posting this kind of stuff, because there's so much of it, at a super low price, because they just want to get rid of it, buy it and use it, man. Just buy it and use it. So... I'm going to be watching out for price drops on things like that. Pallid Bones are weird because they've jumped all the way up to like 150 in the last day. And now they're, yeah, they're going up and down. It's like somebody's trying to change the market on them. But um, anyway, so I'm watching out for things like that as we get to or closer to pre-patch or even just getting into Dragonflight. I expect those markets to be kind of weird and I would like to take advantage of them. Other than that, um, as I kind of just stated, one of the other big items I'm watching out for is pre-patch. I need to pay attention to the PTR and in general, one, about how what the method is used for gear catch-up, and two, what are my gold-making opportunities? Is there any way or anything that I can abuse to either make gold during pre-patch, or is there things I can get in pre-patch and make gold with later? Um... So that's another big one that I'm watching out for. I'm hoping, really hoping we have some good gold making opportunities in pre-patch. Even if it's like almost holiday based where you kind of just have to farm out a bunch of characters for some shards or some crap, spend them at a vendor for a pet or whatever. It doesn't matter what it is. If there's a gold making opportunity there, I'd like to take part in it. Um, yeah, and that's and that's the primary things I'm doing. So that's those are the things I'm working on. Those are the things that I kind of think about making content for, and that's also the stuff I'm like watching, which is mostly just watching the market, watching items like Strange Goop, watching what's going to happen during pre-patch, uh, especially when that hits really hits the PTR. Those are all things kind of on my radar. All right, so now I will move on to the next topic. Our next topic is really just about me and about what's going on with me and my plans. And that is, um, I'm loving making the YouTube content. I'm loving seeing the support. I'm loving all the comments. Like, I, I honestly think, especially in such a niche market like WoW Gold Making, that I'm doing amazing in less than my first month ever doing it. Like, and, and thank you guys. It's because of you, right? Um, it's not because of me it's because you guys are clicking and watching and supporting and talking so anyway thank you um beyond that uh i work at a school and school starts tomorrow so for me anyway which means i'm back to work and i'm back to the grind and 
that means I just don't have anywhere near the time that I typically do. And I don't know what that means for my content going forward because I haven't had to try to juggle both because for some reason even making the videos I do take a lot longer than I thought they would. And yeah, I, I just don't know, right? So I would like to have a set schedule maybe on when I put out content, but I really can't even do that yet, right? I can't do it because I just haven't tried. I haven't tried to juggle. I would like to make daily, but I, I don't know if that's even possible. So all I'm saying is if you're enjoying my content, please bear with me. I, I will get some content out ASAP. I just got to figure out how to balance life and YouTube, right? Um, because, I mean, come on now. At the end of the day, what's my dream? My dream is to be able to sit here and make better and better and better content and just even make enough for a living. And by a living, I mean enough to cover my bills. Like, <laughs> like that's my that's my super end goal. No, nothing major. I, I don't need to be an Asmongold. gold. I just want to, you know, make fifteen hundred a month or some crap off of off of YouTube enough to where enough to where my wife would let me quit my job. How about that? Um, but that's a. I don't even know why I'm speaking of it. That's such a long-term, potentially, probably never going to happen kind of thing. But I'm just, I'm a very upfront, forefront person. That's in the back of my mind. That's a goal. That's something I'd love to see happen. But I'm not exactly throwing all my eggs into this basket. I will. If I start getting close to it, I will throw all my eggs into the basket. But until then, yeah, that's just something I, I dream about. Cool. If it doesn't, whatever. Um, my, my real goal the goal I think that is obtainable regardless is to build a good community and I think we're already starting that uh, there's a lot of familiar faces maybe not faces but familiar names and familiar people people consistently talking and adding to the conversation um, and I really appreciate that and that's at the end of the day what I want as we're working maybe we can work more towards getting um, a discord for all of us which i'll probably do i will do but it'll be at a later date maybe at around a thousand subs things like that nature um maybe start doing like weekend live streams or something things of that nature that i'd love to work into and really build a community but not quite yet we're definitely getting there and i'm definitely feeling like we need to but that's something i know can happen just give me time and then other than that, the other big thing I wanted to talk about is when I would potentially take a break from WoW. Um, not because I wouldn't want to make content, but because let's say let's say they're correct, right? Let's say the leaks are correct. And the leaks are saying that we're going to have here in late October, you're going to have pre-patch. And then I'm somebody who plays Call of Duty as well, and I'm pretty excited for Modern Warfare 2, at least currently. Granted, I haven't touched, you know, ask me again after the beta, right? Um, but that's what, launching on October 28th, and I really want to play it a lot, <laughs> so it's like, part of me wants to take a break in that time, but I'm like, man, if Repatch comes out the 25th, I can't tell you how excited I am, not just for Drakthir, the new class, um, but also just the talent tree changes. Uh, like, I want to get in and mess with my warrior and mess with actual talents and start, you know, building, you know, coming up with builds and ideas of play styles and things that I would want to do. Because not a lot of you know, but I'm also, at least not this season, but I'm typically a really big Path of Exile person. So I like things that are complex. I like theory crafting. I like that kind of stuff a lot. And these new talent trees allow me to theory craft a little bit and come up with other cool fun play styles and builds and check them out and see how they work and i'm really excited for pre-patch because i get to do that on the classes i enjoy the most and i get to go try stuff right i get to go mess with builds consider how i'm going to level all those things i get to level my drag there so this time frame really sucks because again i want to play call of duty but there's also a lot of wow stuff coming there's potentially gold making so I'm, I'm really sad about that because I just will not have enough time for all the things I want to do. Um, but you know what? I think that's a good problem to have, right? So after that, you also have the potential of the game coming out in late November. Um, if, that, if those leaks are true, which means like once we get to about this point, there's no way I'm not 
playing WoW really, really consistently for probably a very long time after that, six months plus. So, and I mean, that's probably if the if it's bad, right? Which I'm hoping it's not. And again, if content's going well and that's consistently increasing, believe me, that makes me want to keep playing too. So that's what I'm worried about. So what does that leave? That leaves, we're already in September. I don't even know when my current subscription ends, but that kind of means that if I'm going to take a break whatsoever from WoW, it might be early to mid-October where I might, you know, depending on maybe when my subscription ends or something like that, that I might be like, cool, there's like three weeks until stuff comes. I need to just take a complete break from the game because here soon it's going to consume my life. So that's something I'm thinking about. I don't know. I might not even because right now I make more than enough gold just from doing tables, right? I could do my tables once a day and get more than enough for a token. Twice a day is like nearly two, mo two tokens a month. So part of me might not even lose my sub at all just because I know with how much gold I can make. And even if I, I can't show you because this is a level 10 character, but like uh, callings when they match up well, like right now I think there's one for Maldraxxus and the rare resources. I have to wait one more day to see if we can luckily get another Maldraxxus. But even if I just did that on a few characters when they lined up really well, like, the gold's so good from that stuff. It's more than enough. So, even if I didn't make content or if I just didn't play much, I would honestly probably still keep my sub up just because it only takes me, like, 30 minutes a day to do all my tables. But anyway, I'm getting off topic again. I'm just, I'm considering when I would take a break, and I think if I'm going to take a break, it's going to be sometime in these first three to four weeks of October, prior to pre-patch, prior to stuff like that. So, anyway, that's everything about me. So, starting tomorrow, I, I don't know what my content looks like, I don't know how, how well or quickly I'll be able to make videos, and just, just give me time. I'll work on it, hopefully we'll get into a schedule, hopefully we'll get everything worked out, but that is, that is everything. That's all things I'm working on. That's all the content I'm thinking about, and that's things I'm watching out for, as well as just about me. So, with that said, if anybody made it this far in the video, thank you. Um, thanks for all your support. Please comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you soon.